to talk about lesson three, uh, the next part of our presentation, which is a table of funding, which is something that's proprietary to uh, the Blue Wave Funding Group, right? This is something yes. that you guys developed and it's uh, sort of like your uh, business mantra, right, for lending. Yeah, it's a great training tool because you use a table. And <laughs> it's very easy for all of us to picture a table. Uh, but it basically highlights the fact that you have four main areas that are required for qualifying. Okay. Okay, so the first one that I want to discuss in our, our table of funding, the first leg, is going to be the debt ratio. Um, you're going to hear these terms a lot. Uh, they call it the debt to income ratio or DTI. And basically what they're taking into account is what are all of the debts that you owe and those minimum payments on those debts. And what is your projected mortgage payment? Uh, that includes your, your principal, your interest, your taxes, and your insurance. And in some cases, your homeowners association. So they take that entire payment into account and they set a limit and say, you're not going to be able to qualify for more than X amount. And that varies based off of what type. Based on that ratio. Right, okay. exactly. So for instance, uh, a conventional loan allows 38% debt to income ratio. Um, FHA, VA, and your USDA loans will allow 50 to 55%. Meaning that 55% of my debt to income ratio can be my mortgage payment or it can be the total sum of my debt? Total sum of what your debt. Now, some people. Including think, car payments, right. student loans, any sort of debt, credit card, okay. All of it. All Got of it. it. Now, if you're one of those types that you pay off your credit cards all the time, obviously you have no credit card payments due. But a lot of us have a car payment and they will oh, sure. take that into mm -hmm. account. So your car payment plus any credit card minimum payments, not necessarily what you're actually paying, but your minimum payments, and your basically your projected mortgage payment. And they say, of your income, this debt is allowed to occupy X percent. And what about things like your, uh, your phone bill or your cable or things like that? Is that included in that as well or no? That's a good question, and I do get that a lot. And yeah. fortunately, those types of items are not. They are not, okay. The rule of thumb is basically what accounts appear on your credit report. And that's where they're gonna basically do the math. And that's that's kind of where I come in because I wanna look at what is the overall you know, debt liability that you have. So your phone bill, not usually on your credit report. Right. You don't have to worry about other maybe membership dues. Unless you never pay like them, right? <laughs> yeah, you don't pay them, then you don't necessarily see them on there. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Now this can include things like uh, if you, for instance, went through a chapter 13 bankruptcy and you have payments to that. Um, so the, to loan, the BK, payments to the BK. Payments okay. to the BK. Okay. Um, anything that appears on that credit report, student loans, um, they calculate, even if they're deferred, they actually calculate that into your debt. Really? Ratio. Okay, that's important for some of our younger borrowers to know. Right, and, and it, I understand there's no payments that are being made on it now, however, this is a uh, Someday they will be due. Correct. Right, Correct. so, okay, so FHA is 55% uh, and right. conventional is 43%. Uh, right. Thirty-eight percent is what your mortgage is allowed to occupy. Forty-three okay, percent is what every pay. So I feel right. like that's gonna. E even if we go back to the beginning, qualification process is when you're trying to decide which package is best for your client, and vice versa. You know, when they're trying to decide it's gonna be better for them, they're gonna take a hard look at that. Probably what allows me to borrow more and afford more house, right. or or stays within my parameters of how much I want to borrow. Right, and that is actually one of the first numbers that I take a look. When I'm asking questions, so, uh, I'm asking, you know, how much do you make? Um, what is, or, or for instance, usually the best way is what was on your last year's tax returns? Right. Because that's the number that the bank is going to use to calculate with. That's the number that I'm going to use. And a lot of folks feel that they can qualify for more. They think they can afford more. Oh, sure. You more. always get those people, right? Yeah, you know, <laughs> frequently. Yeah, and, oh, I and know. In turn, even though they may be comfortable with that kind of a payment financially, the bank is not willing to exceed those amounts. Um, there are very, very few cases. I have seen some that have exceeded those amounts, but it's very, very few. Is that right? Okay, okay. So again, I love your analogy of a table. So as a table, this leg is all about your debt. And right, ratio. right. Okay. This is about your debt. This is, you know, basing it off of what is your income versus your debt. So you're handling, you know, a main item right there, your debt and your income. Okay. Now, we use the analogy of a table because you can actually have a table that has a slightly wobbly leg. 
sure. for instance. So if, if one leg is slightly wobbly, you need to strengthen the other three so the table does not fall over. Sure. So for instance, like I said, I have seen cases where the debt to income ratios were slightly expanded. Well, that means you have to then therefore make the other three Compensate, legs right? stronger. Or put a couple of coasters on the other shorter leg, right? <laughs> 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 Just a few sugar packets and then it'll be fine. I like that.